and blood, and, and they kind of feel that team atmosphere continuity. All right, well, thank you so much, Coach. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, any thoughts on uh, Darius Harris, you know, heading into this season and, and what you've been seeing out of him uh, since the last couple months? Yeah, I mean, uh, Harris or Butler? Ah, uh, Harris, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Harris. So, yeah, he's only been here for about a week or so. Um, he's done a good job just trying to pick up. Obviously, you know, got to get in football shape if you've been out for a little bit. Uh, but he's done a good job asking questions. You can tell he's in a playbook. And I think he'll get comfortable each day as he's here. You know, uh, same same kind of question about Robert Spillane. I know you were talking about him a moment ago, but just thoughts on him so far heading into this first preseason. Yeah, I love it. love his attitude. Comes to work, got pen and paper in hand, uh, brings his lunch pail to work every day. Uh, doesn't say much. Just got to watch him on the grass. You know, he's a guy that. Uh, embraces the physicality of the game. Ball means something to him. He loves ball, and uh, I appreciate coaching a guy like that. It makes it easy. It makes my job fun. And, and Going from year one from year two, uh, what are some development? What's some development that you see from the Masterson? I think the game is slowing down for him. Uh, you know, as a rookie, probably didn't expect to play as much as he played. Uh, now, he's, now that he's done that, you can go back and look at film. And when you look at film, you say, okay, I could have done this better. All right, now let's go in year two. He understands the system. He understands guys around him a lot better. Uh, and he's continuing to grow. He understands that he has to keep working on his craft. No linebacker year two is going to be a, a finished product. And obviously a guy who's transitioned from safety to linebacker, there's still a progression in progress for him. Kind of what you just mentioned, the safety to linebacker, that's a common occurrence that you've noticed within the, in your linebacker room. A lot of guys yep. you know, that play safety in college and switched over. How vital was it you know, to have that skill set still as a safety to be able to help cover the linebackers? Yeah, the AFC West, fast division. So, you know, having linebackers that can't run sideline to sideline or cannot cover, things of that nature, can't play in space, probably just not going to work for us. And I think, you know, the, the new age linebacker, you know, these guys, you know, 220, 230 is about the range right there. And, and as long as you can run and, <clears throat> excuse me, cover, you give yourself a chance. Also, I think having that safety background, you see the field a lot better, right? You can see things. So uh, all those guys in the room, they've adapted now to play a linebacker, and now you got to hone in on those skills. Pretty kind of, you know, leading the new age of those uh, linebackers, Javon Diablo and Wilder, he's kind of the most, uh, the longest tenure linebacker. Even that three years. So what have you seen from him that you really liked in his development? Just day by day, uh, each day getting better at playing the linebacker position, better at communication, better at his assignment alignment, and just doing what he's asked. You know, I think the one thing about Diablo, he does a great job of just um, absorbing and being a sponge. You know, he'll ask a question, he'll go out there and do it, and he'll come back and follow up, and then we watch it on film and make the corrections as needed. Um, but when you become a student of the game, like he's trying to become, uh, it's never, it's never, it's never going to be a, a endless price, price uh, process involved in it. He just has to keep growing as a linebacker. He'll be just fine. Another guy that I've noticed a little bit, you know, kind of reps the draft practices of Marty Burns, the six-round guy, whoever he's shown flashes. What do you like him so far? Hey, he can run. I can tell you that he can run. If you watch him, he, uh, he can accelerate from A to B pretty well. Another guy that's putting extra time in, uh, in the off season and, and after practice after meeting to study and watch himself on film. Uh, again, when you got older guys in front of you that's played a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier, you know, because you can go back and watch film. You might not get all the reps, but you can watch it from film study. Even though this linebacker core is very young and maybe not the most experienced bunch, you know, what are some of the benefits that come with having such a young linebacker core? They're sponge. You know, they don't know any better than what you tell them. So you tell them to do this, more than likely they're going to do that. And that's why I said about the group. Being a hard hat, lunch pail type of group, you don't have to worry about egos and I know it all. You know, they just they want to be coached up and become better pros. And when you have that, you know, as a, even not just as a, a linebacker, you know, as a team, that makes sure we're all better. You know, sometimes that middle linebacker is considered almost like the quarterback of the defense, but is that like a misconception? Do you need multiple quarterbacks on defense, you know, to, to have good communication, or, or do you need one guy at some point to stand out? Well, there's always going to be one voice. There's going to be one guy that talks and gives right, a huddle right, call. Right. But overall, man, all those guys are supposed to talk. You can't play football without talking. I don't understand how you do that. Um, so what we preach in our room, what we preach on this defense is communicating all 11 guys. So it doesn't matter which linebackers in there, they all can communicate accordingly. Obviously, you know, new year, there's always going to be different things. 